Hey guys, welcome back to Skylanders Ring of Heroes. Now, I know it's been a long time since I've done an upload. I think it's been about a week and a half. Um, leading up to Easter, my work was crazy. I didn't have time to do any recordings. Then over the Easter weekend, I just spent some family time. And then after that, my son got really sick. So since then, I haven't really had time to do anything. And in the last week or so, I've barely even been able to play the game too much. I've just been sort of logging on and doing my daily guild invasion. And that's been pretty much it. As you can see, my energy is really stacked up. This is the first chance I've had to actually record a video. Um, so I apologize for the content's sake, but uh, there are some more important things in life than games, unfortunately, for, for the content's sake. But uh, that's just where it's at for me at the moment. Like I said, I've been unable to record or play really for the last week. Uh, so my progression is going to be very far behind. So those wondering about the Tectone Challenge, I'd definitely be putting my money on Tectone at the moment. Um, but yeah, so... Basically, the talents came out. Uh, I'm sure everyone's figured all this, the talents in Hall of Chaos out so far. So I'll just talk to you guys through what I'm doing. So with the Hall of Chaos, what I'm basically doing is I'm aiming in these ones to get gulper pieces, but I'm also trying to hold out and find gulpers that are also dropping fire and magic cubes because gulper looks like an absolute beast of a unit. He's my favorite one of the new units. Uh, Chomp, uh, the Chompy Mage, he looks like a decent healer. It's pretty much just a, a better version of Broccoli Guy from what I can see. But because I've already built Broccoli Guy, I'm not too keen um, on looking at the Chompy Mage at all. Pepper Jack looks kind of decent, but for me, uh, the gulp is where it's at. He's just got um, that... AOE defense buff, which is really nice to bring into a B10 team. He's got the elemental advantage and he's got the focus aggro. Obviously, he needs a lot of skill ups to get to the point of being really useful because if we go in and take a look at him, uh, you really do need max skills and there's a lot of skills to put in and obviously I have no gems, so... Um, no skill stones, but if you get a three turn defense buff, I feel like he will be making a lot a lot of B10 teams work um, and Specifically for me. I've been working on uh, the Kaboom Ninjini and Deja Vu and the team works really well like I can get the on full auto I can get the boss down to like 25% health um, I feel like using that like once I get a few better rune upgrades plus these guys out a bit more. Um, I feel like it'll be really solid with a gulper. Uh, but like I said, the problem is I need skill ups for everyone and the gulper is just lacking. But we'll talk a bit more about my B10 team in a minute. Um, so yeah, basically the Hall of Chaos in the normals, I'm just looking for gulper with fire and magic. If it gets towards the end of the day, like I said, the last few days I haven't even got into it. Uh, but it was if it got towards the end of the day, then I just spam all the gulper ones and just get the gulper pieces anyway, no matter what element they are. Um, as for extreme dungeons, I got none unlocked at the moment. But what I was what I was really looking for, because I don't have the time to just sit and look at it all the time, I was just going for fire and magic with a decent unit. Like you've you've got um, things like uh, I think I had a few that had flare wolf. I got a couple ember ones. Like ember is the ideal one to aim for in my opinion for these. But because, like I said, time constraints, I'm just really looking for fire magic so that I can get those uh, those tomes. And for the tomes or, or the cubes, I just call them tomes, I don't know why. The cubes, like I said, I've been looking for the fire and magic ones and I've been upgrading the, um, the attack. I'm going to mix it up between HP and stuff. I've been trying to work out what my final team will be. I'm thinking Ninjini is going to be in my final team because she's a beast. And the combo between Ninjini having... Um, a deja vu in there too and the kaboom it just it actually works fairly well i can what we'll do while we talk about it i can show you a run now these will be failed runs but nonetheless it'll give you an idea for where i'm at with the b10 um thing so i'm pretty sure he has runes on him hopefully and we'll just check that if not we'll we'll, we'll take a cut and we can swap them over um, Kaboom does have runes. Beautiful. So this is the team I'm looking at using. Uh, it's not very reliable yet. I've still got Kaboom's still plus three. Ninjini's plus two. Obviously Deja Vu is really lacking. Um, and my runes aren't that good either. My runes are very, very average. So this is the sort of team that I've been looking at. The beauty of this team is that Kaboom's just potential to be able to wipe waves is really nice with his bombs. Um, you keep, I still get the attack buff from the Deja Vu, and then the crit buff is actually really handy from the Ninjini. She can just delete some units, and when she's not deleting units, she can also hopefully does attack cry. Beautiful, we should be good now. Um, the, the, the crit buff is also nice on the Kaboom, getting his AoE to do more damage. Also helps the uh, 
the crit from the heal on the deja vu now deja vu is very buggy like she does not ever want to use her heal she used it once in the wave before um but yeah she's not reliable on the heal at all that's where i'm not sure how well the gulper would work i'd have to test how well he does hold the aggro and survive a few hits um but as you can see th these waves work pretty pretty well basically um like you can see there i did get pretty low on the ninjini she may suffer here and die there you go so like i said it's not perfect um but it's what i'm working on i wish the ninjini survived because she does actually do some decent damage on the boss and she if she does proc once she has attack buff it's really nice but the problem i'm having with this team is that um it's basically one the survivability it's not too bad like my whole team can actually survive the revenge from the boss um, it's the healing output on the Deja Vu, which is really costing us, because once we do have that attack break, and if we've got the crit rate down buff on the um, boss as well, it does actually work really well for the team. But as you can see, the the Deja Vu just really struggles to actually put that heal out, um, which does kind of suck. But as you can see, I, my, my Ingenia didn't survive, but we still got the boss down to about halfway. And that's where I'm sort of working on at the moment. Um, it's, like I said... It's not the best. I am really, really liking Ninjini. She'll probably get her own uh, video later on. It really sucks that she did die there. Um, but yeah, that's that's where that's where the B10's at. Um, and like I said, I'm just looking into getting uh, these adventure talents. Jewels, I'm not too worried about. Jewels is going to be end game. So um, like I said, the fire and magic ones are what I'm really trying to do. I've actually been looking more into the attack for um, to get Ninjini's attack up because she is the one that really does chunk out the boss. The only problem is she does need a lot of skill ups to be able to do it effectively. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been aiming for in that. And while we're still on the topic of Hall of Chaos, there is a really good um, guide out there by Spam and Rice. He's he's a Twitch streamer. Uh, I've been planning to get him on the channel. I've been trying to planning to get a lot of guys on the channel, but I just don't have time to do collabs with the time restrictions and stuff like that. But um, he's actually got a guide out for a free to play way to do the extreme dungeon. Um, it's really nice. It's for when you have fire or fire advantage, and it's it's about using um, Kaboom, Enigma, and uh, what's the last one? Igniter. And Igniter is an absolute beast in it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Like I said, I'll try and get him on the channel. Um, but if not, definitely go check it out because he is able to clear extreme mode with that team. Um, it is on a manual run. He does have really good runes, but it's something to look into just to get that more damage so you can be getting more shards, especially if you're someone that's really targeting like Ember or something like that um, to get all those shards. Because this is a wonderful feature to be able to target those extra units. Um, but yeah, that, that's that one. The next thing I wanted to cover was the new update. So the future of Skylanders, you can go into here, find this update they got about. Um, and then they've got just some, this is what they're planning to put in the next update. It's not guaranteed, but this is what they're, they're looking at doing. Um, they'll be lifting evolution prerequisites where a Skylander had to reach max level according to its grade or star level. So that means any Skylander of any grade can reach level 70. That's pretty nice. So you just, it means you can get the, the level bonus of 70 without actually being there. So for me, for something like my um, Deja Vu, that's going to be fantastic. Obviously, I'll miss stat buffs because obviously just each star grade you go up will be an extra stat buff. That's the way I understand it. Um, but nonetheless, if you've got a five-star unit, you'll be able to get those extra stats from level 70, which is really, really nice. Um, guaranteed Soul Stone drops in Adventure Mode. This is, this is one that's kind of worded a little bit strange, but... I think I get it. So I'll just say it how it is and go through what I think. So Soul Stone Drops will be guaranteed for each Skylander adventure stage. Um, but there will be a daily limit to the amount of Soul Stones that can be acquired. Also, the Skylander, uh, the Skylander you will get from each Skyland stage will be renewed. So the renewed thing, I'm not too sure about. That, that just gets me. I don't know whether it means they're going to be changing the unit that you can get there or what that means. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, have a chance to earn a certain amount of soul stones for adventure. So yeah, that, that second paragraph makes no real sense. I don't know whether it means they're, they're changing what drops from where, or maybe we'll get new Skylanders to farm, which kind of sucks if you're farming something and then they remove it, but we'll see what happens. But the guaranteed drops, um, but there's a daily limit. Now, this one is really, really nice, but also kind of worries me because at the moment, the game has so many mandatory, mandatory daily activities and it's honestly burning me out a little bit. The daily boss farm taking about two hours. I've just given up on it. Um, it sucks because I know if I want to do well later on, I have to do it. But 
it just makes me stop enjoying the game so much. So I've given up on the boss stage farm. There's a couple I'll do, but besides that, uh, I just, it, it, like I said, it's all about enjoying a game and I'm not enjoying it while I'm doing it. So I'll just take, take the, uh, take the hit later on and not have the units, but um, yeah, so that's a daily grind. Now you've also got the chaos dungeon, which is a really nice feature, like I said, but for me with not having the time, it's another daily thing that I have to do. Um, and, and it all sort of, it just, it just becomes a mountain of things that I feel like I have to do. Um, and then all these self stone drops, basically if they say like, you know, over a hundred runs, you're guaranteed X amount of drops for each Skylander in these, then it's going to feel like you have to do daily, uh, like X amount of runs of each scenario to maximize the efficiency on the drops you're getting from there. So it's, it's really good. But if you're someone like me who likes to really like optimize, but then you don't have the time to optimize, it's absolutely, it's just like, it's burning my brain, but, um, it's definitely a fantastic feature. If you have time to play the game heaps, um, like I said, it's a fantastic feature for everyone, but it's just my little bit of OCD that it's going to just kill me again because I don't, I won't have time to do it and it's going to burn, <laughs> but that it's nonetheless, it's a great feature, but in my situation, it's kind of just going to, it's going to hurt me mentally. Um, greatly decreased potion cost. This is really good. The potion has been useless for ages. Now they'll be useful. Hopefully they, I, I just hope they just remove the cost, see what happens. But, um, but yeah, remo removing the cost is a really good idea. Um, just to be able to upgrade just use them basically they're meant to be a good reward and you never want to use them because they're too expensive so that's really good um master eon guide this one looks really nice so they've handpicked skylanders loved by all portal masters so what i'm really hoping for this for newer players is that they basically they're going to give more soul stones of select units in the eon thing and i'm hoping boomer is going to be one of them because boomer is a real important unit for a lot of people for progression and his grind is an absolute pain and it just you know, you, you sort of get a week into the game and then you got to start farming Boomer and it takes you five days to farm. So half of, almost half of the time you've been playing at the end of it has been just grinding Boomer. And I got him in five days farming really hard. So other people, it might take up to 10 days. So um, to get that Boomer six star awaken is something that I feel like would turn a lot of people off the game. So if they could improve that and give especially Boomer shards, that would be fantastic. And I think that would be a great change to keep people... Um, sort of intrigued in the game early on without get, getting into that endless grind so early that it does feel kind of unrewarding. So that's a really good change. I do like that. Um, the companion villain cooldown renewal, this this kind of really hurts. Uh, basically Broccoli Guy. Um, I feel like they're trying to phase out Broccoli Guy after we all skilled him up, basically. So the Broccoli Guy, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit yikes, but... Um, because obviously you've got Chompy Mage in there now, so he's he's another healing option. But the Broccoli guy, um, now the initial cooldown being 15, 15 seconds, um, that there's not too often that you need Broccoli guy in the first 15 seconds. In Arena, it's going to be nice. I, I'll, I'll say that. Definitely that helps. This is going to be a buff for most units in Arena, um, the short and initial cooldown, because you can get them out earlier, start getting some effects. But Broccoli guy, my main use for him isn't really looking at Arena. It's more dungeons and pve and the fact that his resummon timer is 60 seconds uh there's a lot of times where your broccoli guy does come out after 30 seconds at the moment and it's really clutch and saves your team uh turning that to 60 seconds is really going to hurt him and make him not so good and make me wish i could refund all the skill ups i put into him but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens um, and yeah, you can have a look at those other changes. Obviously, I don't really use any other villains at the moment, so I'm not too stressed about it. Uh, the, the one, the bad juju one looks nice for Arena as well. The 15 seconds, then you can get your attack buff. That looks good. But, um, but yeah, I'm not looking too much into those other villains. And the final thing on this is energy 50% sale price becomes permanent. So we're planning uh, to permanently fix the energy cost at 50% discount. That's really good. That's exactly what we wanted. That's perfect. So you cannot complain about that. Um, I know a lot of people have been worried that it says sale and you know they, they're going to revert it back, but they've said it's permanent. That is a fantastic thing that can just set people's minds at ease. Um, so that's really good. So all around, this next update looks looks really nice. The only thing I'm not too happy about is the broccoli guy. Uh, to resummon cooldown to 60 seconds. Like I said, that, that thing about the adventure mode uh, guaranteed drops, depending on how it works, it might be just a complete mental head screw for me, but uh, for everything else, it's just, it's a fantastic change as well. Being able to get guaranteed drops, like I was talking about, the boomer grind being really painful. If you can get guaranteed drops, along with every grind, I know Ninjini took me ages. 
um, it will be fantastic. So that's it for that. That's it for the whole chaos, the talents, where my B10 team is at. Like I said, my B10 team is falling behind. Uh, I'd definitely be putting my money on Tectone, but also before I do finish the video, uh, I may be a bit slower with uploads um, over the next few weeks. I just, I just got to let things pan out the way they pan out in life. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep playing. Obviously I said, like I said, I probably won't be able to play as much as I had been. Um, so hopefully my content doesn't become too irrelevant, um, over that time, but we'll see how we go. Um, as for streaming, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to stream. Like I said, like I do say on stream all the time, guys, I, I'm not the best value. I don't get to stream too often. Um, there's so many other good streamers out there. Uh, be sure to check them out. And anyone who is subscribed to me, feel free to drop off and subscribe to these other guys because they are providing much better quality uh, Twitch content than I can do just purely because I can't get on enough. Um, and like I said, they're all really good and I don't want to be giving guys bad value for, for your Twitch Prime subscriptions and your normal subscriptions. So... That's going to be it for this one, guys, like I said. And hopefully I'll, I'll aim to get like one or two videos out a week for the next few weeks and just let things pan out and see how see how life works. But um, nonetheless, I'm not quitting. We're, we're not done yet, but uh, it's just having to slow down, unfortunately. But thanks for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.